School districts and government agencies need the ability to raise money to fund projects like public transportation, bridges, roads, and buildings. Here in the city of South Salt Lake, Utah citizens were given the opportunity to decide what they wanted to do with one of their oldest school structures. One of the first high schools in the Salt Lake Valley was the historic Granite High School. Built in 1906, Granite High had served the community for over 100 years. In 2009, budgetary measures forced the Granite School Board to close Granite High. While closing the school doors helped save the district $1.3 million in operating costs, it also closed the window of producing successful graduates of Granite High. I graduated in 1958. When I was at Granite, we used to have a joke about Granite. We said when the pioneers entered the valley, there was one tree and one school, Granite High, because it was that old, even in 1958. Ivory Homes founder Ellis Ivory is a Granite High School alumnus. The successful entrepreneur might be in a different place if not for his time at Granite High. The previous year, uh, actually in 56, I had dropped out of high school, and so I was driving a truck. Uh, finally, the truck was repossessed, and we didn't have a truck anymore, and therefore I went back to school. Otherwise, I would have been a high school dropout. So the next year was really fun because I was a student body officer, uh, and that was a lot of fun. I ended up winning a scholarship, uh, the superintendent of the district scholarship to go to, to college. Nobody in my family had ever gone to college. Granite High School has also produced many of Utah's great leaders. I graduated from Granite High School in 1959 and uh, had spent actually six years on the campus because I also went to Granite Junior High School. BYU President Cecil Samuelson has fond memories of his days at Granite High. Uh, had uh, wonderful teachers. For me, that was a, uh, a great period of my life. We had a lot of fun. It was a, a great time to be alive. Granite High School also served as a community center with night classes for working high school students and other continuing education programs. I didn't actually graduate with a regular graduating class at Granite High School. I graduated from the beloved Granite Evening School. That's where I graduated, so I, I love Granite because if not for Granite High School, I'm not quite sure what would have happened. KSL Radio talk show host Doug Wright is an alumnus of Granite High School and also an inductee of the Granite High School Hall of Fame. I was a problem child, and I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I wasn't out jacking cars or anything. I just loved radio, and I loved to work. And occasionally work and school would come into conflict and work always won. In other words, radio always won. By law, the city of South Salt Lake has the right of first refusal to purchase the 27-acre campus and the existing four buildings. I have a very strong opinion that I think it would be a very key piece to this foundation of a healthy, vibrant community in our city. The city of South Salt Lake plans to purchase and preserve the property to turn the campus into a town square for South Salt Lake residents. The $25 million town square project may include a charter high school, civic center, and other community amenities. But before South Salt Lake can do anything, they need funds. Zions Bank Public Finance is serving as the financial advisor for the city of South Salt Lake and has proposed the city issue a $25 million general obligation bond to purchase the property and make improvements. A general obligation, or GO bond, is a type of municipal bond that is typically secured by the issuer's taxing power. This means the funds borrowed can be paid back from the monies received from local taxes. But to do this, the city must ask for authorization from the local taxpayers through an election. In November of 2011, the city of South Salt Lake held a bond election. During a bond election, registered voters vote on whether or not they want to pay for the proposed project with their tax dollars. If voters pass the bond election, the proposed project continues. If it does not pass, the city cannot secure the bond with property taxes. The city must find another way to finance the project or abandon the project altogether. After the bond election and a recount, the voters of South Salt Lake defeated the Granite High renovation proposal by only five votes. Further confirmation that at election time, every vote counts. Currently, the fate of the Granite High campus is still in the city's hands. The city may simply find another way to fund the project. My hope is that uh, people will continue to remember the school. It was in uh, 
uh, a wonderful part of the city, really out in a wonderful part of the county, and it was surrounded by uh, lots of very nice people who I think were good citizens and contributed in many ways.